Hello, my name is Sam Jordan. I'm studying white-tailed ptarmigan in Glacier National Park. It's part of a 13-year research program directed by Dr. David Benson titled Move, Adapt, or Die. Ptarmigan are a type of grouse that live in the alpine. They're well adapted to cool climate. Each spring and fall, they molt their plumages to match their environment. They molt from pure white to brown in the summer and then back to white in the, in the fall. They can withstand the cold, harsh environment of the Rocky Mountain Alpine. As climate change brings warmer temperatures, it creates a problem for the ptarmigan. They are faced with three options. They can either move, they can adapt, or they die off. This project is designed to figure out just which of the three they are doing, or is it a combination of them. Ptarmigan have many adaptations to help them thrive in the cold climate. For one, they roost in deep snow to protect them from harsh winds. They have insulated feathers. They also have feathers on their feet, which is unusual for birds, that protects them and helps them walk on the snow. They also have feathers in their nostril holes, which keeps the snow out during the winter. Ptarmigan have very specific habitat. They are found in patches of gravel and vegetation in the Alpine, which is above the tree line at around 6,500 feet in the northern Rocky Mountains. We have also noticed that we find ptarmigan close to either water and or snow. We believe that they stay close to snow and water to keep them cool during the hot days. On the other hand, ptarmigan lack the adaptations needed to protect them from heat. They become heat stressed over 21 degrees Celsius, which is about room temperature. They, were low, they have a low efficiency to release heat or evaporated cooling. They have a hard time releasing their own metabolic heat, let alone the heat that is, comes from the environment. Ptarmigan need a cold climate to keep their body temperatures low. If not, it will result in a low population growth, which will lead to a population decline. This has led to the white-tailed ptarmigan being formally petitioned the Department of Interior to be listed on the threatened species list. Getting up to the study site in the Alpine is one of the biggest challenges, especially this season with a large amount of snow still in the area. Once you get up there, it's finding the ptarmigan which creates another problem. They are hard to, hard to see, but once you find them, they're almost guaranteed to catch them. Ptarmigan can fly, although they usually will not unless that they feel that they are being threatened. So they rely mainly on their cryptic colors to protect them. They are not easily spotted. In fact, you can very easily walk right by them without them even moving. During the breeding season, we use a playback to draw them nearby males. In the post spring season, we use a chick distress call to attract females. This makes finding the birds much easier. Once we have caught the birds, we must collect information along with genetic samples. Then two bands are placed on the birds so that we can keep track of the ptarmigan. The band on the right leg is a registered fish and wildlife band. And on the left is a numbered band that we will use to keep track of the individual ptarmigan. We keep the bird wrapped up with its head covered and its legs free to keep it from struggling, struggling as much while we're handling it. This also allows us to record the weight of the bird more easily. We are also collecting blood from the birds, which we will use to analyze the corticosterone levels at different climates, which will give us a better idea if these are birds are heat stressed or not. We are attempting to collect five capillary tubes of blood from a vein of the bird's wing that is equivalent to the vein that humans have blood drawn from all the time. A cotton ball is then placed on the vein to ensure the bleeding has stopped. After the bleeding has stopped, we measure the tarsuses. Then we measure the bird's wing length. Next, the bird's primaries are checked for spots. Spots indicate that the bird is less than two years old.
We then collect another sample. We pull feathers from the birds which contain small blood vessels which we further use for genetic information. My biggest goal this summer is to go throughout the park to collect genetic information where ptarmigan have never been seen before, to fi figure out how Montana ptarmigan fit in with the rest of the populations throughout North America, and also to determine if there are isolated populations within the park. The summer's been great, with, but it has had its ups and downs. I've uh, wrecked my truck, been kicked out of the campground, lost my backpack, and now I'm sleeping on my professor's couch. But other than that, I've got to see a lot of great views and learn a lot of cool stuff.